In this video, we're going to learn about how the protected access specifier affects members of a base class when they are inherited by a derived class. So protected members of a base class are like private members, except they can also be accessed by the member functions of a derive class. So while the rest of the program cannot access protected members of a base class, the derive class can. Let's go over an example of how public and private members behave with inheritance. And then we'll introduce a protected member so we can see the difference. So we'll start off by defining a base class that has public and private member variables. So we'll say class base class public int underscore public member and then private int underscore private member. Then we'll make a derived class that's going to inherit from this base class. So we'll say class drive class colon public base class. And this drive class here is going to inherit from this base class here. We'll make a member function of the derived class to see the effect these access specifiers have when our derived class inherits from the base class. So we'll say void member function and we'll try to access the public member. We'll say underscore public member is equal to 10. We can try to output the public member as well. We'll say see out public member colon and then we'll output the value of the public member variable followed by an end line. We could also try to access the private member. We'll say underscore private member is equal to 20. And we'll try to output that as well. So we'll say see out and we'll change this to private member and here as well. If we try to save this and compile, we're going to get a problem already. So the private member is a private member of the base class. That makes it inaccessible to the derive class. In the same way, it's inaccessible to the rest of the program. The public member, though, is accessible to the derive class. In the same way, it's accessible to the rest of the program. A protected member is going to be treated like a private member to the rest of the program but to the base class, it's going to be able to access it. So let's now make a protected member. We'll get rid of this private member code here because we know that's not going to work now. And we'll try protected int protected member. Now let's try to access the protected member in the derived class. So we'll say underscore protected member is equal to 30. And then we'll try to output the protected member. We'll say underscore protected member and underscore protected member. If we save this and run it, it's okay. It compiles. And if we try to make an instance of the derived class and use this now public member function, we're going to find we get the result we expect. So we'll say derived class derived and then we'll call derived.member function. If we save this and run it, we'll get public member 10 and protected member 30. Now the protected member is going to be inaccessible to the rest of the program. So if we made a base class object instance here, like this, base class base, and then we said base dot underscore protected member and we try to change it to 30 here. If we save this and run it, we'll get an error because it's a protected member. And a protected member is like a private member to the rest of the program in the sense that it can't be accessed. So if here we said base dot private member is equal to 20, this won't work either. You can see we get an error on this line too. It's only the public member that can be accessed by the rest of the program. So here, if we said public member is equal to 10, that actually is okay. So there's no error on this line. Now, if we're using the access specifier public to inherit the base class, then the protected member of the base class is going to become a protected member of the derived class. So for example, if we made another class here that inherits from the derived class as well, it's going to have access to 
that protected member as well. And it will also be a protected member of another class. So here we could say void new function and we could access the protected member here as well. So if we save this and try to compile after removing these errors here, we're gonna find it's okay. And that's because the protected member was inherited as a protected member. So this base class access specifier here will also affect how member variables are inherited. But that's a big enough topic that we'll leave it for another video. Hopefully this video has helped you to understand how protected members work with inheritance in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.